I'm sure it will not come as a surprise for me to say that landing a really good job in archaeology is no easy task. But it's not totally out of reach either. If you're at an early stage of your career, perhaps having just finished your PhD, you're probably applying for every relevant job you can. If you've done a pretty good job at marketing yourself through publications, conference participation, and maybe some sessional teaching, you've already improved your chances of getting on somebody's shortlist. In this video, I'm going to talk about things you should be thinking about to prepare for a job interview once you've made that short list. In some cases, employers start with what you might call a long short list. This only narrows down the field of candidates from perhaps 100 or so to about 10 or 20, and the hiring committee then tries to narrow that list further to get it down to three or four. Often, they do that by pre-screening the long sh uh, short list at a major conference. In the case of uh, anthropology departments in North America, that's often the American Anthropological Association's conference, because that conference features a major interviewing component. Not only does the AAA host job boards, where employers can post job announcements, it also reserves space at its conventions that these employers can book for interviews, allowing them to interview a wider field of candidates than they could afford to bring into their universities for a formal interview. This can be a good opportunity for you if your record is not quite so stellar as to guarantee that you'd be one of the fortunate three or four people to get an invitation to a campus interview solely on the strength of your CV. If this conference interview goes well, that much improves your chance of getting onto that real shortlist that will involve the campus invitation. Although these conference interviews are a bit of a long shot, you should take them seriously as a good opportunity to improve your chances in part by making a personal connection with one or two of the hiring committee's members. However, as with the real interview that I'll talk about shortly, you really should try to do your homework here. Before you show up at the little booth where the interview typically takes place, try to find out who the interviewers are, or at least who the current faculty members are in the hiring department, so you can talk in an informed manner about your potential contribution to that department uh, in terms of teaching and research. Another way that employers pre-screen candidates before they determine the real shortlist is by online interviews. These days, this kind of interview is typically by Zoom. As with the conference-based interviews, the low cost of this type of interview allows the hiring committee to talk to more candidates than they could afford to do for the more formal interview. But again, you should try to treat this almost like the real interview. Dress appropriately, be prepared to discuss your teaching and research strengths and the ways that you can complement the hiring department's current faculty. And even be prepared to give a short talk on your research. If either you're fortunate or you've made some very good decisions about how to situate your research, you may get an invitation for a campus visit. I should mention that the campus visit can vary a great deal from place to place. In my own experience in North American universities, it can be a quite intensive visit of two or three days in which candidates, one at a time, meet with faculty and students, and sometimes deans or other administrators, give a research talk, and sometimes also a demonstration of an undergraduate course lecture, and also get a bit wined and dined by the hiring committee so they can get a sense of what you're like as a potential colleague. In this context, the hiring committees are trying very hard to make sure that they make the right decision including picking a candidate who is likely to make tenure and whom they think they could get along with for the next 10 or 20 years. At universities in the United Kingdom, by contrast, it can happen that the on-campus interview of all the shortlisted candidates takes place on exactly the same day, with candidates sitting on chairs in the hallway as one of their competitors gives a research talk in the next room. Uh, this somewhat awkward situation might facilitate comparison at least with regards to lecturing abilities and quality of research, but doesn't provide a very detailed impression of the candidate's uh, abilities and, and, uh, and how well you could get along with them. In the North American context, typically the hiring department will fly you into town, unless you're already living locally, put you up in a hotel, and set up a series of lunches and dinners where you'll interact with faculty or students. You'll be expected to give a public lecture, typically about an hour long, 
on your current research and some employers, especially the, if the advertised position emphasizes teaching, will expect you to give a lecture to undergraduates in one of their bigger courses. Before or after these lectures, you'll have a formal interview with the hiring committee, which will ask you about your current and planned research, about your past or anticipated undergraduate teaching, and in some cases about your views on graduate student mentorship or ways to address equity and diversity in your teaching. You may also have some additional one-on-one -on -one or small group meetings with faculty and students who are not on the hiring committee. As you might expect, all this will go a lot more smoothly if you've done your homework. Before you come to town, find out who the faculty are and what are the department's strengths and weaknesses. For example, if it's a department that used to run a field school but hasn't done so for a decade because the faculty member who used to teach the field school retired or lost interest in doing that, uh, you could improve your chances of being hired if in your job talk or your interview you mentioned that you have plans to offer just such a field school. When it comes to your research talk, any insight you might have into the department's strengths, weaknesses, and objectives can help you focus on aspects of your research that are likely to go over well. Keep in mind that many of the audiences will not be experts in your kind of research. A lot of them may not even be archaeologists. So avoid using jargon or complicated terminology while at the same time making it clear that you know your stuff. Don't try to pack in too much information. And if there's some way for you to bring in something on participation by students, that would be a good bonus. Make sure your slides focus more on images than on text. In fact, use text on slides only very sparingly, as the last thing you want is to put the hiring committee to sleep. For your interview, be prepared to discuss exactly how you'd see yourself contributing to the success and reputation of the department. Don't be afraid of promoting yourself. There are ways to do that without sounding egotistical, and the hiring committee really will be trying to hire the best of the best, so make sure they come away thinking that that includes you. Also, be prepared to ask them some questions. This shows that you're serious about joining their department. Ask about teaching loads, about the quality of students, about the mechanisms for introducing new courses, about grant opportunities and lab space. Also ask about things like housing and cost of living. After the campus visit, it's a good idea to send thank you messages to the various committee members and possibly to make some follow-up uh, follow questions to the chair. Then, all you can do is wait. It will likely be several weeks before the committee comes to a decision. And even then, that decision will need to be ratified or approved by some dean or university president. But if you do receive an offer, make sure you negotiate some terms. I'll talk more about that in another video. If you'd like to be informed when I publish new videos, please click on the subscribe button down below. Thank you and stay safe.